Coming up, why did Rishi Sunak call an election for July the 4th a full six months earlier than he needed to? Was it to do with the number of letters of no confidence submitted by his own MPs that are rumoured to have been about to trigger a leadership challenge? Or has he just simply had enough of making a fool of himself on a daily basis by demonstrating just what a terrible Prime Minister he is and deciding that at the end of this school term he just wants to take his wife, kids and fortune off to his home in California to launch his next cosplay, being a tech bro? Or has Sunak's father-in-law, Narayan Murthy, the multi-billionaire chairman of Indian conglomerate Infosys, finally given his son-in-law permission to bow out now that so many government contracts have now been awarded to Infosys by Sunak's government, including those linked to the ludicrous Rwanda scheme? Or is it really more obvious than any of these theories? Quite simply, that it's for party political reasons, that, however bad things may seem for the party and the country right now, Sunak has recognised that it's going to be a hell of a lot worse come the autumn. Stay tuned. The sight of Rishi Sunak announcing the election has become a meme. Even with all his highly paid closest advisers, not one of them thought to hand the guy an umbrella or to work out that by holding the announcement outside of number 10, that would give Steve Bray the opportunity to troll the Prime Minister and the Conservative Party by providing a musical background consisting of Labour's 1997 campaign song, Things Can Only Get Better. In the Middle East, the forces of Islamist extremism threaten regional and ultimately global stability. These tensions are exploited by... It looks like incompetence. And it sounded more like a resignation speech than a campaign launch. Rumours of Sunak's depression over the last few weeks would seem to have been well-founded, judging by his abject and sodden performance here. And why would a Prime Minister 27 points behind in some polls call an election now? It's a great question. Why not wait? I mean, something might turn up. An implosion of Starmer's Labour Party? A nuclear war? England's football team winning UEFA's Euro 2024 competition this summer. Well, it seems clear that Sunak and his advisers don't think that any of those are remotely likely, and that this week's disappointingly smaller than expected fall in the inflation rate might still be as good as it gets for a tired and knackered Tory government that seems to be pulling itself apart right now. And there are several reasons why I think this is probably true, that things would only get worse for the Tories if Sunak had decided to drag things out to the autumn or beyond. But before we get into those reasons, please could I ask you to give this video a like and share it to your social media. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel and feel free to leave a comment below. The first reason why I think that now is about as good as it gets for the Tories is that they've been in power for a long time and Labour's campaign strategy was always going to be, it's time for change. If Sunak had waited until the autumn, he would have been perceived as clinging on to power. Pushing back the general election would cause voters to get tired of waiting for it, which would have added intensity to the time for a change mood. By calling an early election, he's put an end to accusations from the opposition parties that he's scared of an election, and to some extent, he's avoided looking like he's being forced from office. But I would say that by calling an early election, it's sending a message that indeed he expects worse to come over the summer, be that in economic terms as the national debt continues to soar under Sunak's watch, an explosion in small boats crossing the channel, which would not have been affected one iota by the bonkers Rwanda scheme, or the fact that many Tory-leaning voters will be coming off their fixed-rate mortgages over the summer and getting a bit of a shock with their increased mortgage repayments. Inflation itself is also expected to bounce back up again in the second half of this year. Now, the second party political reason for calling an early election is the electoral thorn in the Tories' side, Reform UK Party Limited, a company with multi-billionaire backers masquerading as a political party. The performance of Reform UK Party Limited will have a big influence over the number of seats the Tories will be left with after the next election. 
holding a surprise election inconveniences all the political parties, including the Conservative Party itself, who'd already told its MPs to stand down from an election footing over the summer. But the snap election announcement definitely inconveniences Reform Party UK the most. We saw in the local council elections that they were unable to find enough candidates willing to stump up the required funds to be able to stand in all but a few constituencies. In a general election, they might find it easier to find enough dimwits to stump up the personal funds required to cover their deposit as a Reform UK Party Limited candidate, but the bigger problem than finding these idiots is vetting them. In the past, Reform UK Party Limited's leader Richard Tice has already had to disown some candidates because of racist jokes, Islamophobic comments, calls for David Attenborough to be murdered, derogatory remarks about benefits claimants, Catholics and the LGBTQI plus community. So by forcing Reform to get their candidates in place this quickly, Sunak is probably banking on Tice's crackpot Reform UK Party Limited attracting crackpots as candidates and being publicly seen as having to regularly disown their own candidates during the election campaign. It also gives Nigel Farage less time to choose between campaigning in a chosen seat here in the UK or taking up some post working for his mate, the orange rapist and pussy grabber on the other side of the Atlantic. Nigel Farage is not going to stand. That must be manna from heaven for the Prime Minister. The next party political reason for the snap election is the actual Rwanda policy itself. Any sane person knows that the policy to send asylum seekers to Rwanda in exchange for them sending their asylum seekers back to us is not only prohibitively expensive and nonsensical, but it's never going to do what it says on the tin. Namely, to act as a deterrent to desperate migrants already risking death on their perilous journey to the UK. Current Home Secretary James Cleverley once described the Tories' illegal Rwanda policy as batshit crazy, while Sunak, whilst Chancellor of the Exchequer, expressed opposition to the policy in terms of its cost and feasibility. The Rwanda policy won't affect boat numbers in the slightest, with many experts predicting that this summer we'll see record numbers of small boats arriving on England's southern shores. So from Sunak's point of view, best hold the election before the failure of the Rwanda policy becomes obvious to the wider electorate. The next party political reason for an early election is the economy. There's very little scope for further tax cuts this year. Data published on Wednesday showed that public borrowing was up and the IMF warned the government against tax cuts, arguing that Britain had huge demands for more public spending to improve its public services, including the crumbling NHS, while also needing to stabilise its ever-increasing public debt. The OECD has again recently slashed its growth outlook for the post-Brexit UK to 0.4% for this entire year, well behind the Eurozone. A very different story to the world-beating economy that Sunak was trying to gaslight us with in the rain. It's probably these economic realities that drove Sunak's decision to go to the voters now. Tim Bale, Professor of Politics at Queen Mary University of London says, The factors that are going to decide this election are anemic growth and a state that is collapsing before our eyes. And both those factors will only worsen between now and January 2025. Clearly, and obvious to anyone that gives it a moment's thought, Sunak and his advisers have calculated that there will be more economic bad news than good news for the remainder of this year easier to promise future tax cuts now than fail to deliver them in November. I think this alone is probably the most important reason behind the 4th of July election decision. But finally, perhaps Sunak is hoping that during an election campaign he can remind voters what it was that they once liked about him when he was Chancellor. I found it very interesting that in the things can only get wetter speech as it will henceforth always be known, he talked about his role during Covid and the kudos he fleetingly received for launching the furlough scheme. No mention from Sunak of course that his eat out to help out scheme is universally seen as stupid by epidemiologists and no mention either of the 4.5 billion 
£1,000 worth of Covid fraud that he's not even attempted to reclaim from Covid fraudsters, many of whom, of course, are Tory donors, cronies like Michel Moan, or family members of Tory politicians. Nevertheless, Sunak seems to think he can turn his personal popularity ratings around from where they currently stand. Keir Starmer's personal net approval rating is indeed very poor, at minus 17%. But that's still literally three times better than Rishi Sunak's catastrophic rating of minus 51%. The old maxim of a week's a long time in politics may hold some truth, but even during the next six weeks, even if there were one or even more unexpected events that shake things up a bit, unexpected events tend to be far more of a challenge to the government than to the opposition. So, why did Rishi Sunak call an early election? Was it an imminent internal challenge to his leadership? Has he personally just simply had enough? Has his father-in-law now received enough government contracts that he's allowing Sunak to step down now? Well, as far as I know, it could be any of those things, but I'm sticking with the principle of parsimony. In other words, I think that the most acceptable explanation is the simplest. It involves the fewest assumptions or entities. And that means that the decision was made mainly for economic but also party political reasons. That however bad things may seem for the country and his party right now, Sunak has recognised that it would be one hell of a lot worse come the autumn.